Hey yeah, folks, uh, so tonight I've got yet another Game Boy Color backlight kit. Um, this is basically one of the uh, one chip versions of the, there we go, of the all-in-one kit or the drop-in kit or whatever you want, however you know it by. Uh, but the difference is this is the new version with not one but two touch sensors. So the idea behind this kit uh, and this kit was released for both the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Pocket, which I will be doing the video on as well. Um, the idea is you have the one touch sensor for brightness control and then the other touch sensor for palette control. So this is pretty similar to that Game Boy Color uh, IPS kit that I did a while back. In fact, it's from the same manufacturer even. This is just using the, uh, the smaller drop-in screen, which Oh no, it looks like they sent me a bad one, but that's okay. We'll work around that. That might not even be an issue. That might be in the uh, uh, off area of the screen. Uh, but let's see. So it comes with the board itself, which has the three ribbon cables, I guess, the two touch sensors and the, the conversion. Uh, you get two sticky stickers. Uh, one of them you're supposed to stick on the... Uh, back of the PCB here to insulate it against the Game Boy Color, and then the other one you stick on the back of the LCD to insulate it against the PCB here, and then you also get this foam. Now, this foam, I think I've talked about this foam before in one of my videos on one of these kits. This foam doesn't go behind the PCB. It goes, uh, you're, the intention is you're supposed to cut this up and put it next to the screen to center the screen within the shell, but um, quite frankly, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I had spacers made up. I'm going to use my spacers. Uh, and they're sitting in another kit that I haven't quite done anything with yet. Um, sorry, it's been a crazy year. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to pull the spacers from this. And this kit did also come with a screen lens, but because of who I am as a person, um, I don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. It's it's somewhere in this pile. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on with the install. Uh, first things first, we need a donor Game Boy Color, which is going to be this one. I just got it fixed up and working. Uh, I had to do a repair on the power switch. I'll throw a link to that video in the description if you're if you're curious. Uh, long story short, I ended up breaking the little pin off on this part and. Yeah, that was a mess. But anyway, got it working. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and get this torn apart. And I'm going to apologize for the cacophony of background noise. Uh, usually it's a little bit quieter, but today I have both my AC and the 3D printer running. Um, just got a new 3D printer and I have a backlog of stuff that I've been meaning to print. And it's the middle of summer, and it's fucking hot, so I'm gonna leave the AC on. Anyway, six tri-wing screws, this will come right out. Now, for the most part, this install is pretty similar to the uh, previous iterations of this kit, so I'm gonna try and go through it a little bit quick, but feel free to hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Um, all oh, right. So yeah, as you can see here, it has a 3D printed power switch. How neat is that? But I'm just trying to be extra careful around the parts that I know are broken. All right. And I do want to give a shout out to, whoopsie doodle, knocking stuff over. I want to give a shout out to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me this kit. So I can, uh, so I can talk about it. So I can show it off. So we can, we can experience it together and see if it's any good. If it's anything like the other versions of the kits, then yeah, it's probably perfectly fine. One of the super cool things about this kit in particular is that it requires zero permanent modification to your Game Boy, and I mean. You, you don't even have to do any soldering, it just drops right in. 
Uh, now if you've gotten this far, you've got your Game Boy Color apart. Uh, to get this screen out, it's pretty simple. You just give the shell the old twister and It should uh, pop the adhesive loose. Pop the screen out this way. All right. If you're if you're using your original shell, I'm going to be reshelling this Game Boy, so I'm not. But if you are, now is a fantastic time to clean the shell. Um, you know, soap, water, toothbrush, that sort of thing. And now is also a great time to pop this lens out because you're going to want to use the lens the kit came with. Uh, you just push it out from the inside. I'm using a cloth so I don't get fingerprints on it, but if you're not reusing this lens, there we go. Then obviously you don't care about that. And it just pops right out like that. But I'm going to stick that back in because we will be reusing the shell at some point. Actually, I really should have left that out because it just crunched. There is um, some cleaning that I need to do. Anyway, we're done with this shell because I'm reshelling my Game Boy. I'm going to go ahead and set it aside. Oh, quick note actually before I set this completely aside. Um, if you're reshelling your Game Boy to an aftermarket shell, I highly, highly recommend using your original A, B, uh, D-pad, the membranes and start and select membranes, and the IR window. The aftermarket shells do come with them, mostly, but they're not great. Uh, I mean, it's, it's workable, but you can do better. All right. So let me grab, just kidding, let me pause. All right, I have absolutely no idea where it is, um, the Pokemon Silver cart that I normally test with, so we're gonna use one of my, um, uh, rep one of the flash carts that I made instead. It should offer pretty comparable results, but I always like trying to test with the uh, same thing whenever possible. Let's set this to 2.4 volts. And powered up here. Oh, I've got to plug the card in. Sorry, that's a little bit out of frame, isn't it? Oh, this isn't even Pokemon Silver. I thought I had this flash. This is a uh, ROM hack of that Pokemon Space World. Well, now my spreadsheet's going to be extra interesting. Uh, let's at least check it out in game instead of in the title menu. All right, so right next to this berry tree, right next to the start town, because I'm only like 10 minutes into the game, at 2.4 volts, the stock Game Boy Color is pulling 66 milliamps, almost 67. Not much, but there you go. This is probably the wrong game to be testing this with, but oh well. Let's try the kit now. Switch that off. And need these things. So how does the oh yeah, this goes in here like this with the uh, two white lines up. So you can fold it like that, and then this goes on there, like that. And, uh, let's pop the game in. I'm 
Try not to short anything out. All right, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna wanna swap out this LCD. That is unfortunate. So let me kill these lights so you can see a little bit better. This is a backlit screen. It is pretty dark here, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, so in game, we're pulling about 30 milliamps more at 96, 95. Uh, what, um, whatever brightness level this is, but if we tap this sensor, we should cycle through them. And it goes all the way down to the lowest, which is completely off. And with a decent amount of light, this is a transflective screen, so you can still see, uh, just not with the light setup that I have at my desk, apparently. Uh, I can see it in person, I promise. Anyway. Flip that back on. There we go. And then here's what this kit does that's cool compared to uh, the older versions of this kit. Oh, so on high brightness, pulling up to 100 milliamps. Anyway, if we tap this brightness or this touch sensor, we can change the color palette. So it was blue, now it's green, now it's red, purple, olive, lavender. And then that's the default color for this game. So you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, well, what's the point on a Game Boy Color? Because you can just, you know, press and hold start and B or whatever, use one of the color palettes on startup. And my friend, yes, you are correct. For most games, not every game supports that. Uh, specifically, if you're playing a Game Boy Color supported original Game Boy game, like the international release of Pokemon Yellow, you can't do that. You're stuck with whatever color palettes they give you. Uh, but another even more cool thing, let me grab another cart here. I think this one's Pokemon Prism. I really should just put this together to try this out, but... This is a solid Game Boy Color for sure game. Oh, this is, dang it. It's not the game I thought it was. It's a cool game, just an original Game Boy game, not a Game Boy Color game. Uh, what do we have here? I have a feeling this is um, a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought it was. But it's okay, it'll work for our purposes. So I know it looks super blue on screen, on the camera, and I'm sorry, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I really need to insulate this thing. But you know what, let's, let's just do the normal install. Um, before proceeding though, I do wanna show off why I'm using a different LCD. This one arrived damaged. Unfortunately, things do happen, so if it were any other vendor, I would say contact your vendor. Let them know what happened. Well, actually, no, even, even with Retro Game Repair Shop, you should contact your, your vendor, let them know what happened. But what I mean is if it were any other kit, I would um, I would do that. But I already have a bunch of these screens, so it's it's more effort than it's worth, I think, to get a replacement. Especially since the kit that I'm pulling the spacers from already has a perfectly good screen in it. Right. So this is one of those kits I did some videos on a very long time ago and I have a stack of kits that I need to do more videos on but I had gotten a bunch of defective kits um, you know returns stuff like that and this is one of those kits that one of the screens was broken so I bought more screens put it in the kit here we are 
I still have more screens, they're just in the other room, and I already have that kit here, so whatever. Anyway, let's go for the install here. If you're using my spacers, this is probably how they arrive. You break them apart, and you will need sandpaper or some files here. I'm going to use a file because from Osh Park, they come with these little tabs here that you need to remove. But the file makes very quick work of these. These are the old versions of the spacers, you know, because they say for all in for use with all in one v1. Uh, this is clearly not that kit, but they still work the same. On the new spacers, I have removed that text because it's clearly irrelevant. I don't remember if I put anything in, in their place. I haven't ordered spacers in a while. My one order came with enough spacers to last me this whole time. Alright. See I told you it was quick. And here is the shell this is all going in. Isn't it wonderful? I'm, I'm not joking when I say I love this. It's so great. <laughs> all right, so that'll go in there more or less like that. And instead of having to fuss yourself with centering it, that's what the spacers are for. Stick the thick one on the left. Doesn't matter, but I'm gonna put my name out so I can see my name, because I like my name. And it goes all the way up towards the top, I believe. I'll have to double check that. And the thin one goes on the right. This is not gonna be a problem, I don't think. I think it'll be okay. Um you know what? No. That is going to be a problem. We're going to use the uh... No, we're not. That thing's so gross. Okay. Um, new plan. We're going to use some double-sided tape. Probably not recommended, but here we are. All right, so don't stack these on top of each other if you ever want to separate them, because I don't think these are coming apart. I'm just gonna use two strips though, not four. Hopefully, I don't regret this. I'm concerned that this might add some thickness. That I don't quite have room for. But we'll make it work. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I foresee myself taking this shell or this Game Boy Color apart several times and I don't want to have to reposition the LCD every single time. Um, but otherwise, if you're just doing the install for yourself and you're not weird like me and planning on taking your Game Boy Color apart, then don't bother with adhesive. And 
despite what it looks like, this stuff is not that sticky. I mean, like, it is really sticky, but I will be able to remove this screen if I need to. Wow, that takes up, especially since it's going to be barely touching the screen. did not foresee that one. That's okay. All right, carry on. So here is where you would apply your sticker on the back of the screen, but this screen, like I said, because I had to swap out LCDs, this one already has a sticker on it. So I'm going to not use the one that says attach this to the back of the LCD. But here's where you would if you were. Attach that in here. And we're just gonna flip that up like that. We're actually going to leave the, uh, the ribbon on the uh, underside here. And I really don't think that other sticker is necessary, but they say to use it, so let's use it. Stick it down just like that. Right. Next up, we're going to put the buttons. There it is, okay. So, like I said, normally I recommend using your original buttons if you can, but I'm doing another video for this shell, and I think, I think I wanna check out these buttons. They're probably terrible, they usually are. But just in case they're not, I wanna give them a fair shake. Another interesting thing we'll find out is whether these touch sensors work through a metalized surface. I might have to um, put sensors under the screen or something. All right. the wrong screw. So here's something I just noticed with this shell, and forgive me, this is actually something for the other video, but I don't really, too lazy to cut. <laughs> it came with four, four short screws, even though the motherboard only needs three, but one of them is a uh, tri-point instead of a Phillips, whereas the rest of these were Phillips and then five long tri-point screws for the rest of the shell. Don't really know what that's about, but there we have it. All right, so the first sensor goes behind the IR window, no big deal. Uh, in this particular case, because this is an aftermarket shell, that's not transparent anyway. So it's not like I, I'm not actually losing functionality for the IR sensors. Uh, by putting the touch sensor there, but on any other shell you would. The other one is going to go on this side right up at the top. Got to tuck that in and then connect to this ribbon cable. And lock it down. 
and power switch. This particular aftermarket shell, it does not come with the um, cart shield pre-installed. Make sure you get that installed. You can transfer over the one from your original shell if you want. This thing is reflecting the light right in my eyes, which is entirely what I expected to happen, but I'm going to complain about it anyway. <laughs> All right. Damn it. Again, recommend using your original hardware if possible. In this case, I'm not, but it's for another reason. short screw in the battery compartment. Oh. All right, so here's where we put on the lens. We got. Orange on gold? Nah. Gold on gold. See, oh I might actually have to put a different kit in this in this shell. Cause uh I feel like I bought this lens just for this shell. <laughs> And here's here's one of the lenses, likely the lens that the kit came with. There we go. We'll uh, we'll use that. But before I do, let's double check. I haven't completely destroyed everything. So none of my, oh, that sensor's working now. It's brightness. But my palette sensor doesn't seem to work through the shell. I kind of expected that. I'm still disappointed, but. Out of sheer curiosity, though. Oh, the shell isn't conductive. I kind of expected it to be. I mean, it would have to be if it's electroplated. Because that's kind of how electroplating works. You scratch it a little. Now, I'm getting a reading on my multimeter, but it's not enough to buzz it, to make the buzzer go off now that I've scratched it. Yeah, I suppose with a better... I spent a little bit more time trying to get it to work, it would work. But anyway, there we go. Let's pop the lens on. Oh, let's clean this first, because I keep touching it with my bare fingers.
You know, now that I'm looking at it, I think this screen is broken too. But you can peel off the inside of that just to make sure everything's lined up properly. And it is. So we're good. I forgot to do my uh, tests here. Let's get the uh, EverDrive. Or the Easy Flash, because that one was on top. I thought this one's the brightness. Yeah, so this. It's gonna have to get moved. It's under the screen. Okay. See, I told you I'd be taking this thing apart again. That's okay. We can look at that later. Let's take a look at my scrolling bars test. Oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. We want the one that actually issues a reset. Scrolling bars with a reset. So what we're looking for here is every time the S in scrolling, right there, every time that crosses the screen, it issues an LCD reset command. And what we're looking for is we want to see if the LCD is doing anything funny with that. Like, is it is it introducing some garbage data? Is it dropping a frame? Is it tearing? And I don't see anything. Um, I think... You know, I think the older versions of this kit actually give us the same result, so I shouldn't be too surprised. I just haven't played with one of these kits in a while. Um, but, I don't know, looks good to me. I see no issues. Uh, other kits, specifically Freckle Shack, the original Batch 1 Freckle Shack. Um, oops, hit my camera. That one handled resets very poorly. If you've heard about the uh, Pokemon pinball issue, that's what they're referring to. Let's start up Legend of Zelda DX here. And we'll check and see if there's any weird glitches going on with this dude's chain uh, or if we take a look at these posts on the top, when the screen changes on some of the other kits, there's some really annoying ghosting artifacts, but I don't see that here, and I don't see any weird glitches with this chain. Uh, when the screen does start scrolling, you can see, well, maybe not, because you got to get the right angle, and I'm sorry, I haven't been at the right angle. Uh, you can see his uh, chain, like, it, it looks like it starts flickering, and that's... Quite frankly, that's just the game itself. That's not the kit. So, I think this is a, this is a solid, solid win here. And this color palette unintentionally matches very well. I like it. Okay. But, uh, one thing I do... I was trying to get into this earlier with, um, with Bonsudon when I grabbed this cart here. This is a color game that would normally be in color, but as you can see, it's got the, uh, uh, I guess, pseudo gray scale because it's not quite four colors. Uh, you can see it has the DMG color palette, and I keep, I keep trying, man. I'm trying, but it's not working. I can't change the palette. I gotta pop it apart again, but uh, yeah, you can you can use those color palettes on Game Boy Color games. There we go. That angle looks good. That's about what I see in person. All right.
right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause for a few minutes while I relocate this power switch. I will be, or not power switch, excuse me, um, touch sensor. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it torn down again, and I just want to reiterate that um, the only reason I'm doing this is because the touch sensor doesn't work through this uh, gold-plated shell. Uh, it does work perfectly fine through the plastic on a normal Game Boy shell, but this, this is a special shell. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make our own touch sensor with some copper tape here. Find the end, I think that's it. And I'm just trying not to pull off the, uh, the band here, because this whole thing will unravel. And I'm going to cut myself a nice long piece. Well, not too long, about that long. Most of an inch. Uh, actually, we're going to cut it a little bit shorter because what I'm doing is I'm putting it in this spot where there's nothing sprayed on the shell. And I don't want it overlapping with any of the conductive paint, just in case. And even that's still a little long. Okay. Another bit. I'm also going to make this just a little bit shorter, just to ensure that it's not going to be touching the screen. All right, so now I need to solder a wire to this. And let me get this stuff. And this is just, this is how the original sensors worked in the uh, older kits here. You can see it's just a little bit of a copper tape soldered to a wire. In fact, I could have just pulled that sensor. Uh, that was that was air quotes, I just was holding something. <laughs> I could have pulled that sensor and used that one instead, but I like making my own since I already have the whole roll of copper tape that I'm never gonna use for anything else but it tins just like anything else. And that's it. Well, that's one side. Still needs to do the other side of the wire. But we're going to stick it down. Just like that. And I ended up replacing the tape on this side just because it was not making any contact with the LCD. Slightly wider piece. What did I do? There it is. that down and I'm just gonna run this and actually stick it into this tape here just to hold it and we need it to be it only needs to be to up here but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of slack just to make it easier to solder And 
And so this goes like that. So this is the one we want to solder. I'm going to undo this latch here and that thing comes out. We're going to solder to that TP1 right there. Come on. There we go. TP1 right underneath the connector. And that's it. All done. Let's go ahead and put it together now. Oh man, I did touch it. Dang it. That's what I get. I knew I installed that, the lens too early. sure that the wire runs in this gap, not behind the LCD. Otherwise it could create a pressure point. And I'm going to fold a small loop into it. To pick up the slack. And there we go. Let's put it back together now. I think I'm just going to do three screws because I didn't realize they were stuck to my screwdriver and accidentally threw half of them across my desk and lost them. Actually, I'm going to have to find more screws. Six, seven. Haha, -ha, there is one extra in that pile. That nope. Is that that's one? Alright, we'll we'll do five instead of six. So 
think I found all of them. All right. There we go. And now I have pallet control. All right, so check this out. This is Pokemon Yellow. Let me kill the lights here so it's easier to see my screen. And I'm gonna hold down B, which I believe should be the monochrome um, palette. But notice it didn't set that for Pokemon Yellow because Pokemon Yellow does not support the Game Boy Color palettes. You see it's in full color, but we can enable the palettes in this kit, make a black and white, give it that blue tint, green tint, red tint, look kind of pink in the camera, uh, lavender, looks really blue on camera, olive, like original DMG, and then I guess this is like a blue light filter or something, because it looks like it's still in color, and then back to color. So it looks like it's actually the exact same color palettes as the uh, IPS version of this kit, which actually makes me think, let's try, no, let's try the Easy Flash. That one's, that one's much harder on batteries. I don't think we're gonna run into that issue again that we ran into with the last IPS kit. Bring that in more. Or I had it running around in silver and it was starting to glitch out on me. I don't think we're going to run into that, but let's try it anyway. Otherwise, it looks fantastic, though. And yes, that is as loud as this Game Boy Color gets. It's, uh, I think there's something wrong with it. I meant to fix it while I had it open, but I got totally sidetracked with the power switch thing. I don't think it's going to cause any issues for, oh my god, really? Two steps? Ooh, it's a Nocto. Level 7? Wait a minute. I kind of want that. This isn't my actual Pokemon Silver though, so it would feel... I'd feel dirty. It's just a flash card. And sorry, I'm playing through the viewfinder on the camera because I have to hold that this at a an angle that I can't really see it. And this D-pad really isn't the greatest. I can't go right. Come on. Right. There we go. I'm pressing right. There it goes. Left is fine. Up, down, fine. It's, it's right that I can't do. I don't know why I can't do right. It just goes down. Oh, now it does. Now it goes right. Oh, see, there it goes. Right is really difficult to press. Like, look, my thumbnail is only on right, and you see it was, it's triggering up again. So yeah, I think I'm gonna open this one more time, but I'll, I'll do that off camera. I gotta clean that D-pad anyway. But I don't see, sorry, I'm, I keep waving this thing around. Um, I don't see any of the uh, glitching that I saw on that IPS kit. And because this is a full color game, we can't do any of the Game Boy Color palettes, but we can do this. And pretend we're playing on a uh, DMG. It's pretty cool. I like it. I mean, even if it's not, 
even if it's technically um, losing functionality, I like it still. And I guess that's the blue light filter. Even though it just makes it look even more blue in person, it looks pink, or on camera, excuse me. In person, it looks very pink. So I don't know what my phone's doing to the footage, but the screen is so hard to capture anyway. You can see it doesn't play well with angles. But yeah, there we go. I, I don't think I can say anything more about this kit that I have not already said. It's super cool. I'm really liking it. Uh, we have the brightness touch control. You can even turn it off. And in a reasonably lit area, you can still see it. Like, for instance, if you're outside. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it, but there's so much glare. This thing is so reflective. Yeah, that's that's not happening. I would need like a diffuser on that light, and I just don't have one. Does that work? That's not big enough. But okay, turn that back on. But yeah, so anyway, super cool kit. Um, only problem is you will have to relocate one of the touch sensors if you're using one of these gold shells. But luckily, there's a spot right underneath the LCD, and it works through the lens. So that's, that's super cool. I'm very happy with that. And the buttons, surprisingly, aren't bad except for right on the D-pad. I don't know what's up with that. But I suppose that's more a comment from my other video. Anyway, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll end this here. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. I'll uh, let you get back to it. And if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, hit me up in the comments. I do try and read every comment, even if I don't reply to every comment. Um, I do, I always have a bunch of cool links in the description, more info in the description, stuff like that. Uh, and again, I just want to give a shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me this kit. Uh, they send me a lot of cool stuff to play with and hardly ask for anything in return. All they ask for is that I make a video give my honest opinion on it and hell I was gonna make a video anyway so uh, thanks again Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way and uh, thanks for the other kits that you have sent me that are in my backlog that I promise I'm getting to <laughs> next week um, otherwise thanks for watching guys have a good night <laughs>